How you doing, Internet? Kirk FM here with uh, Comic Impact and this week's Top 5. We're going to talk about the uh, Top 5 releases of September 16th. My personal Top 5. Uh, and let's admit it, that's all that really matters because the only reviews that matter on the Internet are right here. Uh, we had some really cool outings and some uh, really great titles I'm really excited to talk about. So let's just get right into it. Number five this week, we are going to go with Jason Aaron, Star Wars number nine. Uh, I don't want to come off as such a Star Wars fan, but uh, the truth is, is that um, you can't ignore the fact that the writing has been so goddamn solid in all of the Marvel Star Wars series, especially in Lando, which almost made the top five this week, uh, especially with Jason Aaron at the helm. Now, remember, this is all officially canon as we are going into The Force Awakens. So all this stuff that's happening in the comics totally fucking counts. Uh, Jason Aaron, of course, introduced the idea that Han Solo may or may not have been married, may still be married. Uh, Princess Leia has just figured this out. Um, let's just talk about the fact that uh, Imonen on this title is the new artist, and his art definitely belongs on this series. Uh, works perfectly in the Star Wars universe, and he is just nailing um, just a little tiny uh, facial tics and the way the characters move that seems so familiar uh, to anyone who's watched the Star Wars film millions of times like I have number four this week we're gonna go with DC Comics Bizarro number four uh yeah man I, I always kind of struggle with Bizarro because this series is just kind of tailored to my sensibilities so I have to take myself away from giving an honest review of it and the truth is I was so so relieved when DC announced that this was not gonna be one of the titles getting the axe prematurely especially considering that it is a miniseries uh, obviously, we are still following Bizarro and Jimmy Olsen as they uh, trek it across the United States on uh, the way to tell the uh, amazing, great, all-American Bizarro superhero photo catalog coffee book that all your friends will have in their living rooms coming to you soon. Why is this working? Because as fun and silly as this series is, there's still some really great character breakdowns. And for instance, at some point, we discover that Bizarro starts playing with uh, Zantana's type of magic, and there's a goof up, and for most of the issue, Bizarro becomes completely normal and starts seeing uh, everything from other people's point of view and how he's perceived to other people. And it was such a fun novel idea that one, I was sad to see it actually go away, and two, it's something that I would have really loved any other artist, even a more serious setting, kind of explore that idea a little bit more. It works perfect in this series. Guys, please go give this thing a, uh, a chance and go check it out. Like I said, it's more lighthearted and it's so much fun, but it is just still turning out really great quality comic storytelling with art and it's so collaborative, it's great. Go get it. Go ch check it out. Let's see, I get, I get kind of worked up. I, I really, really enjoy this series. Give it a shot. Number three this week, we're going with The Beauty number two. This was a highly anticipated title for me. I've been waiting a month for it. And if uh, you remember, um, I suggested it as uh, one of my top picks about a month ago. And the truth is, this is a perfect follow-up. I told you that the first issue was one of the first best amazing outings that you could have ever hoped for in a brand new series and be, uh, you know... Uh, transported to a really cool dark noir world. Basically, we're dealing with uh, a world where there's a sexually transmitted disease called the beauty, and it basically will make you the best version of yourself. Uh, you know, blemishes, 10 pounds, ruggedly handsome. Obviously, I am beauty free. But uh, it just creates this really amazing world where uh, now you've got people wanting the beauty or people that are actively, you know, <sighs> beauty phobic is probably a way to say it. And uh, we are following the lead of two detectives as they are investigating beauty related crimes. This series has been awesome. This was a great follow up to number one. Please go check it out. The Beauty Number Two by Image Comics. These guys are a great team. They're putting out an amazing story. I can't remember the last time I had a tie a tie. I did it myself. Ladies. Number two this week, we are going with Sex Criminals number 12. Obviously, uh, I have a lot of things to say about this series. Zdarsky, Fraction, if you want, we can get some sexy mood lighting and awesome background music. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pick these clothes to 
color coordinate with the cover this week. I don't know what you're talking about. Can you give me this, this issue definitely shows a tonal shift in the story that they are telling right now. Obviously, uh, if you've been following the series as closely as I have, uh, now you know that our two amazing sex criminal protagonists who like to have sex and then stop time when they climax and go rob banks for the greater good of the world are on the quest to go find other people just like them. Obviously, uh, it's kind of creating a better story. It's kind of growing the world in this last arc. Uh, adding more characters and kind of, you know, building some uh, more tension as uh, for a while the series was kind of like in its own little bubble and now that it's starting to kind of pop and spread and go over the place and get in your face a little bit, um, it's definitely taken the storytelling to the next great level. A lot of people are going to say, hey, look at this, Matt Fraction now writing a uh, action-oriented issue going back to his roots in comic books. But I'm going to say nay, it was a writing device so that you would pay closer attention to one of the other characters as she reads off to you basically the history of the patriarchy and how women were suppressed throughout the ages as, you know, basically society just freaked out over women in general and how they worked and we just didn't know at the time so we just called it blasphemy and said bad things about it. But like I said, if you're not paying close attention, he's kind of pairing up the fact that you're getting a lesson. Uh, he's speaking out about something that he passionately cares about in this issue. And at the same time, I also kind of like to read into it that with the action sequences and all these new characters that they're out discovering, they're not just discovering characters in the comic book. They're actually really talking about some of the different people that you and I know in the real world that we come across on a daily basis. And it's just speaking to me on a lot of different levels. I always say this and I'm going to stand by it until something better happens. Sex Criminals is the best comic being published in the industry right now on a consistent basis. Please go convert, go buy this smut, uh, become just as, I don't know, excited about it as I am. It's going to say something dirty, but we're going to stick with excited because that's still a little dirty. I don't know if you've ever heard this, but when someone is uh, dressed nicer or a little more formal, it's actually uh, easier for the person talking to them to uh, hear the bad news that the person's about to deliver to them. Uh, in this case, it is the disappointment of the week. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a surprise. I'm going to go with Secret Wars, Marvel tie-in, the Infinity Gauntlet. This is issue number four. Uh, yeah, I know what you're thinking, but dude, you've been talking about this comic and you love it and you love the idea of a family-oriented Nova Corps. And this is true. The story development, the character development, and on top of that, the certain beats that we've seen along the series have been amazing. On top of that, I've really, really enjoyed watching uh, a lot of things through Thanos' eyes. This writer, Dugan, has definitely uh, kind of brought something new to the table as far as a different way to look at who Thanos is in the series. He's definitely still up to his Thanos ways with the Infinity Gauntlet and trying to steal all the Infinity Gems. But why is this a disappointment of the week? Well, uh, have you ever seen a movie where like, you're kind of waiting for that third act to start, but the beginning of the third act is when they finally give you all the story at the same time, right before the big battle scene, and you're absolutely sure that the guys were like racing against the clock, still writing that part of the script before they filmed it in two days? That's kind of this issue. It's all action, and uh, I just really feel like the artist didn't have enough time to kind of figure out exactly where it was going when and who was doing what to whom and it just kind of gets convoluted and a little confusing and it took us you know a few more reads for me to really kind of understand and process uh what the next step in the story was uh we are introduced to the secret wars version of i think it's adam warlock but then he's also dressed like captain marvel and he's got the soul gem and like i said i'm only taking away what i could glean after reading this several times it's confusing. I'm still excited for the series. I can't wait to see it wrap up. I also really, really want to see this go on after uh, Secret Wars is all over. Alrighty, guys. Number one this week. Fucking blew me away. We're going to go with Tokyo Ghost, Image Comics. Issue number one. Amazingly stellar first issue. Like I was talking about with the beauty. Uh, I love that Image lets these creators just go as big as possible in their first issues trying to introduce uh, readers to brand new characters and brand new worlds and brand new settings that they have never seen or heard before or ever read. Uh, yeah, you might as well just show the cover. I may have also color-coordinated this one this week also because 
that's badass. It's a giant motorcycle that says Zeus's dick on it. And oh, by the way, that's Sean Murphy art. And how sexy is this? Uh, I really want you guys to go check out this issue, especially if you're a big fan of Transmet by Warren Ellis, which is also one of my favorite series. I really feel like that Remender was definitely influenced by certain techno future uh, hyperboil um, that you would find in such things as Transmet, and it really feeds into the series. Um, we are definitely introduced to these two characters. One is a very young pretty girl, as they usually are in a comic book, and then her giant motorcycle riding uh, completely teched out, addicted to the world around him and view screens. I don't want to say boyfriend or partner, we're still not quite sure on that, and their giant fucking motorcycle. Uh, the art is killer, like I said, it's Hollinsworth and um, Murphy. Those two guys work so well together, um, one complimenting the other. Uh, this story and this world works so perfectly with Murphy's art, and as where I've seen Murphy work with really great writers who just kind of let him do his thing and let the art tell the story. Uh, there's this really great dance going on with Remender and his lyrics. And I'm going to call them lyrics as, as opposed to uh, words in this story. And man, you just, you got to start taking a really close look at all the little tiny details. Uh, I did take two passes at this issue. One, just to get the whole story. And then two, to actually go back in and see all the little tiny things that was left throughout the comic that you constantly are rediscovering as you read it. And there's some really special, minute details that uh, I think really bring the story to life a little bit better than most first issues that you would find on racks today. Uh, other things that I really found captivating, uh, the world that they're creating, that it's like the future, it's tech, it's TV, it's being constantly bombarded by information at any given time. And it feels like people are just kind of completely numb to their emotions and they actually have to buy certain drugs to replicate those emotions. Also, at any, you know, part in the story, you, you meet these characters that are like engaged in something, whether it's like huge violence or their day to day lives. But they also still have like view screens and viewfinders and watching like seven or eight different screens in front of them. And it just really is this allegory, cautionary tale that I think Remender's uh, telling his uh, audience to. Also, I think he's kind of turned the mirror on himself a little bit as, you know, you and I are definitely addicted to, I don't know, this screen that we're watching right now or my phone that I'm going to go back to after I'm done with this video. This was an awesome issue. I'm really excited to see where the rest of the series goes. Uh, crazy characters, uh, a bad guy who's just gleefully nihilistic but completely aware of how completely unaware and nihilistic the other people around him are. Uh, really fun and you know me I like kinetic and I like frantic uh, when you're telling one of these stories and this just does it across the board it's fucking amazing guys go get it and there you have it guys the top five for this past week uh, really great titles I implore you to please go check them out especially if you're a giant fan of something that's been around forever or if you're willing to go take the dive and discover new worlds that some of these creators are starting to write and talk about and create fucking amazing I'm really enjoying some of the titles hitting uh, the shelves in the next couple of weeks as always please comment down below please tell me where i got it right what i got wrong what you're reading what i should be reading please find me at twitter at kirk like stuff and uh you know let me know if uh, this is my color or not that's really important also i want you guys to talk about and maybe let me know what was the first introductory issue that you read that made you just really excited for whatever was going to come next uh that is something that we've been talking about a lot in these uh past few weeks and i'm kind of curious to hear what you guys have to say about that and as always when you make it this far in the video um it's really special i like building this community with you guys uh reading comics is pretty much one of the coolest things in the world and on top of that it's just a collaborative art that i always like talking about and sharing my love with you guys with uh as always um we'll see you next week and thank you see you later